Good morning, everybody. We've come to the end of another week. Hope your week has gone well and you're looking forward to a fun weekend as well as a meaningful one by being in church Sunday to worship the Lord. I uh, encourage you to worship with us here at First Baptist in Rock Hill. We have our contemporary services at 8.30 and 11 o'clock and then our traditional service in the middle at uh, 9.45. Uh, this Sunday is also going to be special because Monisa and I are celebrating our 40th anniversary other than Jesus Christ, the greatest gift of my life is her. So I uh, appreciate you praying for her. Today we are in uh, Psalm 15, so chapter 15 in the book of Psalms. And uh, this chapter ask and answer the question, what is the, the character? What is the character of a man or a woman who is worthy to enter the presence of God? Now, you and I know that because we have Jesus as our Savior, we've been uh, cleansed by His blood. We have access to the Holy of Holies, and so His blood makes us worthy. We get that. That is true. But in your Christian life, as you live as a disciple, there are things you know that, that define your character. And, and, and those determine the effectiveness of your prayer, your intimacy with God, um, in a sense, you could say your ability to rest in the holy presence of holy God. Look at verse 1 of chapter 15. He says, O Lord, who may abide in your tent uh, before the temple was built, so the tabernacle? Who may dwell in your on your holy hill? Who's, who's worthy to be in your presence? And then the, this is a brief psalm, only five verses, but verses 2 through 5 answer that question. And what you discover when you read it is that these things that shape or define the character of someone worthy of the presence of God uh, and therefore who will have an effective prayer life, intimacy with God, all of these characteristics are related to how you deal with people, how you treat people. Now think about that. God is saying that our relationships with others, the way we deal with people, the way we treat people, speaks loudly about our character or the lack thereof. Um, look at verse 2. He who walks with integrity and works righteousness and speaks truth in his heart. Uh, some Bibles translate the word in verse 2, integrity, as blameless because it's the Hebrew word that was used for an animal to be sacrificed to God in their Old Testament sacrificial system. And remember, that animal was to be one without blemish. It was to be spotless. It was to be blameless. It was to be the best of their flock, have no flaws. That's our life. Speaks the truth in his heart. What does that mean? Well, where do lies begin? On the inside. And so you're, you're honest on the inside, because until you're honest on the inside, uh, your lips are not going to be honest. So there's integrity in terms of, of what we say and how we live in relation to people. Verse 3, he who does not slander with his tongue. That's another reason that you have to be truthful and honest on the inside though, so that, that what comes out. And remember in the Gospels, Jesus said it's not what someone eats. It's not what you know goes into you that defiles or corrupts a person, but rather it's what's, what comes out of you. That sin originates in here. And, and it shows up in our speech as well as our behavior. And so he says, when you have integrity on the inside, you speak the truth in your heart, you do not slander with your tongue. And, and slandering or is, is gossip that that makes other people look bad, okay? The, the Hebrew word has the idea of walking around, walking around talking, walking around talking about somebody, walking around talking about some subject. That's what slander, that's what gossip is, and God says that's the opposite of godly character. He says in verse 3, nor does evil to his neighbor, doesn't do anything bad or hurtful or harmful to his neighbor. And then, nor takes up a reproach against his friend. Uh, some Bibles will translate it as a slur. It's the idea of you, you say something that casts shame on another person that, uh, that is intended to embarrass or shame them. And then look at verse 4. 
in whose eyes, talking about now, who, who's wor- these are all uh, expressions designed to answer the question in verse 1, who, who, who has the character that allows him or her to be in the presence of God? Well, verse 4, in whose eyes a reprobate is despised, but who honors those who fear the Lord. In other words, a person of character doesn't celebrate a vile person. A vile person, but rather honors those who fears God. And 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 at the end of verse 4, he, he swears to his own hurt and does not change. It's the idea that he keeps his oath even if it cost him in the process. He doesn't change his word just to avoid uh, some pain. A man of integrity. Um, and, and, and I think our culture today, because we live in such a celebrity culture, we elevate them, we, we put them on pedestals, their influence is way beyond their worth, anything they've earned, and so he says in verse 4 that a, godly, a person of godly character who has intimacy with God, is worthy of the presence of God, is not someone who elevates, celebrates people who are vile, but rather those who genuinely fear God. And how, how do we know you fear God? Well, your character is reflected in all the things he talks about in these verses. Um. We celebrate celebrities, athletes, politicians that um, we like even when their character is lacking. They can throw, they're great at throwing a football. They're great at making three point shots. They're a talented actress or actor. His positions as a politician are my positions. And all of that is fine. And we can celebrate their positions. We can celebrate their talents. But don't celebrate them as godly people if they are not godly people. Don't throw away your character and integrity. That's one of the big problems we have in this culture is we can't be honest about anything anymore, it seems. I remember the presidential election in 2016 when it was Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And uh, I felt then, probably more so than any time in my life, I was voting for the lesser of two evils. I agreed more with Donald Trump's policies, so I voted for him. But I sometimes joked like I went into the voting booth holding my nose and then went home and took a shower because I was going to feel dirty if I voted for either of them because of their character. Their character is not what is described here as someone worthy of the presence of God, neither of them. Can we be honest about that? Or do we in our celebrity culture, because we like that person's talent or that person's position or that person's skill, have to turn a blind eye to their sins and their faults? Well, I'm going to stand with God's word on this stuff, and I hope you will as well. Uh, One more thing. Look at verse verse 5. He who does not put out his, he who does not put out his money as at interest. This is talking about the kind of character that's worthy of the presence of God. Nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does, he who does these things will never be shaken. It's the idea that I don't make money at the expense of others. That I, that that I don't take bribes from the powerful or from the rich at the expense of the weak, the vulnerable, and the poor. Integrity. He says the people who demonstrates this kind of character not only, listen, not only are worthy of the presence of God, he says they will not be shaken, or some Bibles say not be moved. The Hebrew word can be translated to totter, to shake, slip, move, be overthrown, dislodge, fall, or drop. He says the person who has this kind of character by their living is going to have stability. They, they may be hurt by others, they may be attacked by others, but they will not fall into a ditch because of their own lack of character. They, 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 won't, they won't destroy their lives and reputations by their own immoral decisions. Other people can persecute them, other people can hurt them, but they won't be the ones doing it to themselves because there will be stability. They are stable of character, godly of character, and therefore their lives are stable. 
we need these kind of men and women in this country. We need this kind of men and women in our churches. We need this kind of moms and dads, wives and husbands in our homes, men and women of godly character. And as Christians, let's learn to be honest. I may like somebody, I may agree with somebody on certain things, but don't allow that to cause me to turn a blind eye to their lack of character. That makes me look like a liar and a hypocrite. Well, that's God's prophetic word for today. I'll see you Sunday and then next Monday.